Ladies and gentlemen, spacefarers and space fairies, storytellers and storytellies of all kinds, welcome to Story Dive. Uh, we're happy to have you here. Uh, we are. I just brain farted. My name is Kai Johnson, and this is my co-host Logan Humphrey. Hello. Did I say that right? <laughs> yeah. Did I say that, right? That, that was right. Okay. Just want to make sure. Just want to make sure. Okay. We're, we're pulling the last names in. Yeah, we are. It's official. It's By the time official. you're hearing this, uh, we have many episodes out for you to re- hear. I almost said read. For you to listen to. Hey. Uh, story Dive is all about us uh, kind of exploring the realms of storytelling in all of its forms, all of its mediums, all of its uh, factors and facets. It's armpits and leg pits everything oh, about it it's all we're exploring it all all the crevices bro you're making so me, you're making me feel a certain way mm, i don't know <laughs> what to do with that information uh how are you doing logan i'm okay i've uh been getting over getting over a call i've been sick past week or so uh so my voice uh may sound a bit deeper than usual um Ooh. but uh I'm, I'm hanging in there you know i'm here to would talk, you say more masculine masculine uh kind of yeah yeah actually sometimes Heck i yeah. wish my my voice was always this deep you know but uh mm. i'll take what i can get <laughs> well, as they say sickness makes the heart grow fonder when you get in sick, some ways, you get sick. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> For today, uh, I wanted to take us on a different journey uh, that we haven't gone for. One could say that no man has gone before. Ooh. That is the realm of sci fi. Nice, dude. I actually don't know. A lot about sci-fi i'm pretty i i kind of stay away from it and i that's something i don't understand about myself like i don't really listen to sci-fi or listen i don't consume sci-fi content like at all um but it's like there's nothing about it that i feel like is unappealing but for some reason it kind of just like irks me a little bit i don't know why hmm. so it irks you yeah i don't know it's like when something's sci-fi it's kind of like a turnoff for me and i i don't oh, know why um it just doesn't immediately capture me the way like medieval fantasy does and uh you know modern day setting is also like totally fine with me but then like as soon as something's sci-fi i'm like eh, i don't know it's intriguing to me because i'm not sure at least from the research that I've been doing, yeah. the whole like you know two hours of research, I guess, that I've been doing of sci-fi, I don't know if very many people know what science fiction like what classifies as science uh, fiction. Okay, I, I see, think it's I a much broader genre than we think it is. Yeah, because I I I typically think of like space and stuff, and that's kind of what turns yeah. me off is like space. I was actually about to ask you that question. Uh, so, my dear friend. Yeah, Logan, go ahead. Go ahead. What do you immediately think of when I say science fiction? So, I think of like space and space, uh-huh. spaceships, that kind of thing. But I also think of like people in like, what do you call it? Like track suits. Like, they, I know it's like, it could be like that, that kind of a outfit where they're like in a. Uh, like a spaceman suit kind of where it's like head to toe big gloves oh yeah you've got buttons you've got laser guns you've got aliens you've got uh you know uh like it, everything's made of metal like all that's what i think of you know so gotcha. just okay like, yeah. interesting interesting so actually it's pretty similar to like how when I just before I was doing some research in this, I just kind of wanted to like double check for myself what I thought sci fi was, and it was similar things of like, uh, you know, uh, aliens, spaceships, lasers, all kinds of, yes, you know, stuff like that. 
Yeah. Um, so I'm actually going to move us on here to this next question, which I think you're going to find very interesting. Uh, what do you think is the very first science fiction story? And this, the, based on how you answer this, it's like ever. This might broaden your expectations of what sci-fi is. Like, what is the very first sci-fi story? Well, I, I mean, I don't even know what the first story is. So, like, like how far back does this go? Is this like, like caveman, or are we talking like the first movie mm, made well, that was like first sci-fi I'm, movie? I'm like, thinking like first kind of published science fiction or uh, as a as a story because like people can tell stories about space and stuff in the past sure but like what's what's considered science? so after you answer this question i'll tell you what most experts consider is science fiction i know i know what you're gonna say because it's like science fiction it goes way beyond because like is it, you're going to say something crazy like, you know, Lord of the Rings or something, right? Where it's like, oh, no way. <laughs> it's not, but, quite, it's but, not quite that, bro. Well, I know, but it's like you're going to say something like that where it's like, I would have never thought this was sci-fi because it doesn't have shit. It is and, true. And aliens the and goal stuff. here is to derail but, your analogy train yes, right off track. I, I, I'm excited for you to blow my mind, but I honestly can't think of anything like beyond like Star Trek because I just don't know of any media before star trek that would come even remotely close right like i could say like uh dude i don't know like what's what's an early book that everybody's read like i don't know like to kill a mockingbird but that i mean star trek might be before that but that's not true i don't know i have no idea dude charlie chaplin bro is he sci-fi i think i think you're getting <laughs> You're overthinking it a little bit. I think but, I really am. So your I, mind might be a you're little saying bit that you're saying the earliest, that. the earliest sci-fi story ever made. I'm like, bro, did the cavemen come up with one? That was like a long no, time no, ago. So, all right, here we go. We're gonna spit some facts. <laughs> okay, dude. Um, this is gonna be really interesting. So, sci-fi as a genre, the original published work of sci-fi is Drumroll, please, um, editor, which is you. Wait, what? <laughs> Some drum rolls. Or you could do real drum rolls, either or. Oh, you want me to do a drum roll? Yeah, sure. Okay. The very first sci fi published work is Frankenstein. Frankenstein. In 1818. Oh, uh, okay. I, was, I feel like I was actually on the right track somewhat, somehow. You, you kind of were. You kind of were. <laughs> Oh, dang. Wait, so 1818, like wow. just a little over 200 years ago is when uh, the very first kind of, a lot of experts classify Frankenstein as the first science fiction kind of story. Yeah, okay. So I, that makes sense to me because it's like using science to create a fictional character. Uh, yeah, so. Yeah, that science makes sense fiction. To me. As a definition of the uh, genre, as it were, science fiction speculates about alternative ways of life made possible by technological change, and hence sometimes has been called speculative fiction. So essentially, science fiction as a genre itself is uh, an exploration of technological advancement in any way, shape, or form beyond what we can necessarily think of in our current Yeah. So back in the day, Frankenstein, I mean, we still can't make a Frankenstein. And right. Frankly, I don't know. We're if closer we than we've ever been. To. Yeah. But that's a, a topic entirely for another day, um, how to yeah. make a Frankenstein. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that would be a crazy topic, that? dude. Crazy, crazy topic. I actually am curious, well, how, like how close we would be to that kind of technology, or even if or why we would necessarily want that technology. But either way, Frankenstein, I, uh, by definition, uses that technology to essentially create a, a new life that somehow has a soul. Um, very intriguing stuff. But like two hundred years ago, that's not like in at least in the grand realm of stories, that's not that old. 
Yeah, that, it's it, probably it is, one of the newest genres to exist. Well, it makes me wonder because I'm like, there's no way people before that weren't making stories. Like, I I don't know if that's actually the first one. I think it's just the first, like the the latest, like the furthest back in history that we have like recorded of a, a science right, fiction story. Right. Like, we don't have anything before that, but I'm like, I'm sure that like somebody made a story about like using science to like like revive somebody and they were a zombie or something like i'm sure that like there were stories back in the day that could qualify um but it's true like i feel like up to that point like even just the like the consumption of stories and entertainment wasn't a big part of the culture probably like you know, like as as society progresses and uh, more technological advancements happen, it creates more room for uh, entertainment and stuff like that. You know, if if that makes any yeah, sense. Yeah, definitely. So I feel like mm-hmm. more stories have come out of the past hundred years than the entirety of before. You know, because we're in that stage where people can just like like that that can be their their living you can like like back in the day you wouldn't make a living off of writing books necessarily or i guess unless you were a poet or a bard yeah and, and and also that was the only way like like shakespeare and stuff uh i don't know how far like how far back was shakespeare i have no idea but like people making plays and writing books so those were the only ways to like tell stories and mass producing it was like near impossible you know there were ways to to make it happen but like Nowadays, it's so easy to tell stories through so many mediums uh, that there's so many mediums that we can make a podcast about it, right? Like, it's, it's crazy. Right, yeah. Uh, whereas yeah, back, back in the day, you really only had, you could tell them in person, you could write them down to have other people read them, or you could reenact them through, like, a production. And I, But now it's like, bro, we can, we can do whatever. So, uh, yeah, anyway, that was a little bit of a tangent, but it's very interesting to think about uh, stories back in the day, which maybe that maybe that is a topic for another day. Like honestly, talking about like the history yeah. of stories, like what what are the first stories ever written? But oh, we will. Oh, <laughs> it is all in our. <laughs> it's actually one in our. We'll be talking about later. Okay. In one of our later episodes. Okay. Well, so, I am. Uh, I'm ready to get back on on the sci-fi train. Gotcha. The sci-fi train is choo-chooing through the station um now based on that definition of just like technological advancement it's intriguing how much that opens up in in what's considered science fiction um yeah because like like we mentioned we just kind of thought of space this, somehow science fiction is translated to the, the space odyssey kind of genre but actually the space odyssey genre is a subgenre of science fiction. Yeah. So there are so many science fiction stories that are outside of like that don't need space, and they're still extremely science fictional and futuristic. Right. I feel, um, I feel like the because uh, you know space is the most popular one by far, and I you know I, there's a we could go into that. You know I feel like it's so easy to do space because like y- you could do anything. Right. It's so easy to come up with planets and new species and like it's just it's yeah. very it's very appealing because you can do whatever you want out there uh but i feel like the other one that is tackled a lot is like robot uh, yeah like, yes he, robots he, like here on earth so it's like either robots take over the planet or we like explore space like those are like usually the two topics people go with yeah interesting that you mentioned those things because. Hey, as you're telling me this, it makes me like through my studies, I've kind of started to realize like how much more there is to it than all of this stuff. Yeah, but what, I, um, I have a hard time thinking about it. Like, well, what else is there? Right, right. Well, that's exactly actually what we're going to do here. Okay, um, yeah, I'm excited. So I have a quick game. And any listeners uh, that want to participate in this game can, I guess in the comments, you can tell me how, what kind of score you got out of it. Cause there will be a score. 
I have here in front of me a list of uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13 stories. Ooh. Science fiction stories. So 13 science fiction stories that have they're classified as sci-fi stories and that have been published on different mediums as early as 1869. So we're going to go through the ages and get these stories and I'm going to just tell you the name. I'm only going okay. to tell you the name and I need <clears throat> you to tell me what it's about. Okay. No Google, no chat GPTs here. Just Logan brain power. Okay, can I like ask for like any sort of hint or anything or am I just going in? Yeah, blind? yeah, I'll give you I'll give you one hint if you need it. You get a you get a phone a friend, which I'm your friend today. Oh so. heck yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'll think about it. Uh, but I, I can't give you a hint on all of them because, okay. yeah, we got to make this hard for you. Okay. I'll or make... harder than it might be. Like, do we I... got some weird ones. Do I win a doubloon if I, if I get it right? Oh, yeah. Okay. So you're on, on the scoreboard for, well, 13 doubloons are here for you. Heck yeah, dude. I could buy a new car. <laughs> wow. We need to really guesstimate how much doubloons are worth. Cause that sounds pretty nice. I shouldn't have given mine away. Yeah, dude. dude that's why I'm keeping them. All right. All right, dude. Hit okay. Me. Here we go. This is story number one. Now I'm going to tell you the year it was published, and then I'll tell you the name, right? Okay. Uh, and I might tell you the author. Okay. Just for authenticity's sake. Yes. What were you telling me? These, the time these people, it was even if they're not. The time, as yep. in, like, what hour of the day it was published? Oh, no, no, like the, the year. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I already said that. Yeah, so I'll, I, you'll get the year. Okay. Year, and then uh, who wrote it, and what the name of it. Okay. So our first one, you actually probably have heard the name before, but it's it was made in 1869. Oh, so this man. is... Uh, 40 years after Frankenstein, Frankenstein, wow. 40, yeah, 50 years after Frankenstein. So sci-fi is kind of on its way, but this, uh, was written by, uh, let's see, Jules Verne, mm. Jules Gabriel Verne. The story is 20,000 leagues under the sea. Oh man. Um, I I've heard the name before. This isn't the first time I've heard the name, but it clearly isn't a space story because it's under the sea. Um, so it, it, like, can I ask? Like, it was it a book? I mean, I assume it was a book. You can ask me. It, it's originally a book. Okay. I think it became a film later, but it's a book. Okay, so I. Because books kind of have the the ability to do more creativity stuff. Like what what I mean is like you can you can write ideas easier than like making them reality in like a movie or something. So I'm like, this guy could have like done some crazy stuff in this book. So let me let me think about this. Two, two is it tw two thousand leagues or twenty thousand? 20,000 leagues under the sea. 20,000. So I'm going to guess that this book is about uh, a group of people who uh, explored the ocean with like a submarine um, or something. And they ended up finding like another world underneath the sea. Kind of like... Uh, the whole King Kong thing where he lives inside of the earth. He's like a second earth, like ice age three or something. Yeah. So, so they yeah. like go under the sea and there's like a world underneath that the, all the water. Like maybe. I'm catching maybe up. So either like Atlantis or like a whole other like earth. Um, That's my guess. Okay. Actually, that's a pretty decent guess. Um, they don't have like the journey to the center of the earth kind of strange like the earth just has this weird like spot in the middle of the earth where there's no water or 
it's not crushed by millions of tons of gravity or anything. Right. It's not like that. But okay. so twenty thousand leagues under the sea. You are correct that there is a submarine involved. Okay. So it's nice. about a French oceanographer, Pierre Aranax, and his unflappable assistant Conciel. Mm. So they joined the U.S. Navy to hunt down and destroy a monster in the sea. Okay. Like a, some some sort of monster. They don't know what it is. And eventually through the story, they find out that the monster is actually a submarine oh. called the Nautilus. Oh. Uh, who is commanded by a man named Captain Nemo. What? And they do eventually go to sunken ruins of atlantis yeah ah. i've never read this story myself but th this is a that's the synopsis of the story hey i i feel like i was pretty spot on i don't know you were pretty spot on i, I think uh i think you deserve a doubloon there let's go dude oh man that's exciting dude. okay hit me with the next one so Okay, this is number two here. Oh, wait, lots of doubloons to spare. Now, the second one is a, published in 19... No, sorry, 1898. Ooh. Hold on, let me get the... I lost the publisher. Uh, this is also a book. Mm. 19... No, sorry, I'm doing it wrong. Okay. Let me start over. Ah, <laughs> second one is 1898 by H.G. Okay. Wells. H.G. Wells. This one is called War of the Worlds. War of the Worlds. I've never heard of this before. Uh, really? No. But it sounds to me... Because I don't know if back then they were even thinking about... Space travel? Like, I don't know how much people knew about space back then. Like, yeah, you can see the moon. So they know that there's other things out there. But it's like, would this be, this wouldn't be like two different planets battling it out. Like, I don't, I don't know if that's possible. So maybe it's about uh, like an alternate universe. But like, dude, I don't know. Like, we're so conditioned these days to think about time travel multiverse theory and space travel like we are just so accustomed to all that um but back, yeah, yeah. back then i don't i have no idea what people knew about all that so more of the world i'm gonna i'm gonna keep it tame and say that this was about um i'm gonna say this was about like four different like factions around the world uh because this could have been like a fictional world for all i know but it was probably based off earth because what else do you have to base off of but um I, i'm gonna say it's a fictional world where four different uh like continents like battle it out to you know take over the world but they're all they all think they're in the right you know, doing the right thing, and they're all different species that, like, don't exist on Earth normally, so, like, maybe one of them is human, uh, and the rest are, like, these weird creatures. Maybe one evolved from apes, and then one's, like, a lizard person, and the other one's, like, a fish person. Like, I don't know. Um, that That's my guess. I don't know if, right. I don't know if that's correct. Uh... But yeah, I'm way less confident about this one. It's, it's such, such a vague, such a vague name for a thing. Yeah. Well. Okay. So it's it's you said four factions of like ev evolved animals that are fighting for. A There's planet. like four different races that like don't normally exist. Like one one could be human, but I'm thinking like StarCraft kind of deal where it's like three completely different Back factions are fighting it out. Super curious. Um. Why four? Oh, so it doesn't... Okay. Where did four come from? Why did we just decide four species? I don't know. It's like... It's War of the Worlds, right? It's not war. It's it, A war involves two people, really. But a War of the Worlds has to involve more, and four just seems like a good number. I feel like it'd be hard to write a story about more than four. 
but if you have less than four, then it's like not, yeah, that's not, fair. not as cool. Like four is just a good number. I don't know. Okay, that's, that's what came into You're my brain. For, first, the analogy train. Hey, the analogy train has four cars on it. So does it? No, oh, it does. I remember now. Um, maybe five. So anyway, maybe five if we decide to add another one. Well, um, yeah. Anyways, uh, okay. <laughs> War of the Worlds is about a group of aliens. Some sort of red tentacly looking aliens that it basically enslave and uh, destroy the human race. Oh, geez. So it wasn't alien story. So I, I guess, don't. I guess aliens were always a thing. But like. Yeah, extraterrestrial life has been explored for long, yeah, long before. I, guess I didn't think about this that. kind of stuff. When I, when I factored out all the different planets. I also factored out like aliens, so I think that's my bad. Well, so it's it's interesting. I actually don't really know if this is a tragedy or not. I don't know how the original book ends. Uh, the only th experience I've had with War of the Worlds is watching the movie with Tam Tam Cruise with Tom Cruise in it. He's, there's actually a movie with Tom Cruise. I think it was like one of his earlier really? films. Yeah, it's, like it's of this just book like, that was made in like 1900. Yeah, 18, 1898, yeah. Yeah, but it's like, that's like, well, like over 100 years ago, and Tom Cruise right. in a movie about that? Yeah, that's yeah. That's kind of nuts. Dude. It's it's really interesting. Uh, well, I do remember in that movie, the those aliens, like, are invading, and it's they're about to basically just, just storm the Earth. There's absolutely no stopping them. We have nothing, we, there's nothing we can do about it. And then they just die, like, all at the exact same time. And they ended up learning, like humanity learned later, that they died to the common cold <laughs> because their immune system is very different than ours. But and it's they... like something that you don't really consider. Yeah, but I mean, how were they? How were they all dying at once? Was it like, were they a hive mind or something? I think so. Either way, it's a, uh, it, it's interesting just to kind yeah, of like I explore know. that. I think a lot of audience people. At least from a storytelling standpoint, felt that that was very bait and switch. Like, what a lame ending for like this giant war. Yeah. They died to a cold. Yeah, it's kind of like a comical ending for something that sounds so serious. So. Yeah, yeah. I think the original one is a tragedy, but I I couldn't be sure. Maybe someone in the in the audience knows or has a way to has read it. I actually yeah. don't know if anyone's read it recently. It's a, of course, it's like a almost. Yeah, two hundred year old book. That's crazy. So that's crazy. Sounds sounds like a great sci fi story. Yeah, uh, the these older books, these older stories, I've kind of felt are just like they've set they laid out so much groundwork for the stuff that's coming later in this mm, list. Yeah, 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 it's really intriguing. Okay, so. Uh, no doubloon there. It, no you, doubloon. you were close. It was like maybe not, a half doubloon. Not or I could really. give you a chocolate doubloon. The, the only... The, no, well, okay. Um, sure, I'll take the chocolate one. You know, it sounds pretty good. Okay, yeah. Well, Thank you. Uh, you know, it's like one of those chocolate gold coins. It's a super cheap, disgusting chocolate, but you still eat it anyway because it's yeah, a coin. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fine, dude. I, I, <laughs> I'll, I'll take it, dude. A doubloon's a doubloon. A doubloon's a doubloon, even if it's chocolate. Okay, third yeah, one on our one. list here. Uh, this was published in 1911 by Edgar Rice Burroughs. Mm. Um, this is called John Carter of Mars. Okay, well, that's, I feel like that's kind of a giveaway. Um... Well, maybe a little bit, but... <laughs> um... Okay, John Carter of Mars. So there's two options here. Either someone from Mars came to Earth, or this is about someone going to Mars. I feel like those are like the two options here. Or maybe it's both. Or maybe it's all on Mars and there's no Earth involved. Because right now I only know that there's a guy named John Carter and that he's on Mars at some point. I 
and you said 1911. Dude, this is crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah, let, let's say let's say this is about a guy. You said from Mars. Of Mars, John uh, Carter of Mars. Of Mars. So it sounds like he's from Mars. It doesn't sound like he went there. Like, it's not John Carter goes to Mars. It's John Carter of Mars. So, I think there's a a being that is native to Mars. And he somehow gets involved with humans who either travel to Mars. Or maybe he meets them on Earth. Or maybe they find him and then they bring him back to Earth. Or maybe they like set up a colony on Mars. It's it, this, this book is going to be about earth and Mars, like having their own like civilizations. And John Carter is like the main character and he's on Mars. And maybe, maybe it's about like Mars thinking earth is like weird. The way we think Mars is weird. So it's like, they're thinking, Oh, those aliens from Earth. Blah blah, you know. So maybe it's like a perspective on like what it's like to grow up on a different planet and like how you would view us. Yeah, that that's all I got. <laughs> all right, that's pretty good. It's pretty good. Okay. Um unfortunately, it is relatively nothing about what this stuff is actually about. But you're, it's interesting okay. that you can glean such a different story off of the just the name alone, right? And what the original story is told. So the original John Carter of Mars is—it's kind of like an antho- antho- uh, an anthological story, it's a series of stories, kind of like it's almost like comics. It kind of seems like like a comic oh, book series. Yeah, almost. I'm trying to. So I know what you John, mean. Where it's a bunch of like little unrelated stories. It's not necessarily unrelated. So I guess it's not an anthology. Like disconnected, I guess. Is that a better way to put it? Yeah. I think there's a relative overarching timeline, but it's not a very clear timeline. It's sure, just sure. all about the same person and his adventures. I uh, see. Okay. So John Carter himself is a Virginian soldier oh, that gets kind of like teleported-ish, sci-fi fictionally teleported to... A fictional equivalent of Mars. I think it is Mars, but the people of Mars call it Barsoom. Okay. Like the planet Barsoom. Okay. And he, as a human, effectively has superpowers. Super strength, super durability, Uh, super jumping. Like Like that's one of his iconic... Kind of, yeah. Where gravity is not as strong there. So he has... He just is like extremely strong compared yes. to everyone else. Okay. So he's kind of like a Hercules style character just placed in on Mars fighting aliens and alien empires. I think he gets married at he, some point. That's crazy. Does he ever get go home? So uh I wouldn't know in the comics or the original thing. The only thing I I actually have experienced John Carter before in the form of a movie. It came out in like 2000, let's see, 2009 is when John Carter came out. No, wait. 2012 is the one that I watched. Um, And in that one, he does get to go home, but he eventually decides to go back to Mars to be with his, his wifey. Yeah, interesting. That's, yeah, that's so weird. Um, That's super cool. Like, I, I would have never guessed that it was about someone becoming, like, pretty much a superhero on Mars. Yeah, it's so intriguing. Like, yeah. these kinds of stories exist and have existed for hundreds of years at this point. Yeah, I, I almost... In the genre. It's weird, because I, I almost wouldn't even call it science fiction, but it is. It's like... It's like a superhero movie, but science fiction. So I actually, after reading this, after all of this study, kind of consider superhero stories like a 50-50 mix between uh, sci-fi and fantasy. But that's a 
that's a topic for another day. Yeah, no, I know what you mean, though. You know, like, a lot of superhero origin stories have to do with, like, being in a lab and stuff. So, like, uh -huh. yeah, and there's a lot of, like, technological stuff. But I do know what you mean, because uh, Star Wars would probably have a very similar... Um, whatever you'd call it. Like, it, Star Wars would be fantasy and sci-fi, whereas Star Trek would be probably mainly sci-fi. But they, it's not mm. fantasy elements. I, you know, I, I just feel like the spectrum there is like... I, I know what you mean, because I was thinking of Guardians of the Galaxy as well, which is like very sci-fi, but also very fantasy. So it, it's interesting. Right. It's interesting how they, how they mix like that. But... Okay. okay. Next one. Well, unfortunately, no doubloon for you yeah, there. I, so you're... I didn't get it really. One for three, surprisingly. Okay. So uh, I thought you would be 0 for three by now. So you're doing great. Okay. Now, this next one uh, is. Uh, this is going to be kind of interesting because it's not technically one story, but it sort of is. Uh, I'll explain it after. Um, but maybe you have seen them. I don't know. We'll we'll check. It was published between 1940 and 1950. Like these stories. Okay. Within that decade, they were all published there by a man named Isaac Asimov. Uh, I think I said that right. Okay. I hope I said that right. Doesn't really Isaac involve. Asimov created I Robot. Ah, okay. Okay, um, I think I know this one. So, all right, and it's I it's because I've seen the movie with Will Smith in it, which I know might not be one to one, but like I know Will Smith isn't the main like the main character is different. I think in the original series, I don't know. He's that freaking uncanny robot that's in there. Well, I forget his name. Uh, it's been a long time since I've seen it. Yeah, anyway. All I remember is John Car Will Smith gets hit by a car, and I'm like, there's no way. He just, he just kind of brushes it off, and I'm like, all right. What? I, I mean, okay, that's, that's, I really that's, remember. that's a whole other can of worms, but I, I, I'm i kind of trying to remember, because I don't really remember a lot of that movie. Um, I just know that, like, that it's about the concept of robots, like, like pretty much... Uh, taking up arms and trying to like get rid of the human race because they, they're like uh they like want to rid the world of humans and like because they're the ultimate race and they kind of you know what i mean it's like the whole it's like one of the first concepts of like robots taking over the world um as like like an apocalypse like setting. um kind of like terminator style yeah but ter terminator is about like pre preventing that from happening in the past whereas like irobot's like it's actually happening in real time um like just how scary it is to like uh deal with robots when they like don't want you around and outnumber you it's like what do you do um so mm -hmm. that's i mean i don't know if the plot is any deeper than that other than like because i don't remember what the main character is like or what his motives are other than just like trying to stop he's this a dad from happening you know i'm just like yeah he doesn't want this to happen and he is very involved in the process of these robots doing things so um i think he's a dad and there's like an inhaler involved okay it's kind of coming back to me a little bit but, but... I, I i didn't know the series was so old that's kind of cool yeah it's it's, it's so intriguing uh, all of these everything that i've told you except for twenty thousand leagues under the sea has gotten like uh, some sort of adaptation through movie within the 2000s or early yes. 2000s. But I mean, I would say that this is way more what people think of when they think of sci fi is iRobot. Yeah, we're starting to get into kind of like the robotic territory. So, right. iRobot, you're kind of on the mark there with the. I think you're you're leaning too far into Terminator territory of like robots taking over the world because that's what the movie's about. But the books, it's a nine publication anthology series oh. exploring the three laws of robotics, which I'm not sure if you remember what those are. Dude, I, I have them here. I do not know. I don't know them. 
So the the three laws of robotics are number one: a robot may not injure a human being or through inaction allow a human being to come to harm. So that's law one. Law two, mm. a robot must obey the orders given it except excuse me, I'll, I'll read that better. A robot must obey the orders given it except where such orders would conflict with the first law. So that's a that's the second law. And then the I third see. law, a Robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first and second laws. So it's like, it's almost like a priority list where it's like, this is the most important, this is the second most important, this is the third most important kind of thing where the first, yeah, the, yeah. the first, and like, like yeah, I, I can see how it goes down and it's like, this is the most important thing. And then this is the most important thing, except for the one before it. Yeah. That's interesting. And if you ever study robotics, that essentially is what it is. is uh, you, you have a machine ask a question. If yes, do this. If no, go this. And then it asks a second question. If yes, go back to the first question. If no, continue kind of stuff. Right. That's okay. Yeah. Programming it. It's... But this... Author Isaac Asimov uses these laws to kind of, and that kind of like law of programming, or I guess the mental state of programming, mm -hmm. to determine how robots would act in these stories. It's really, really intriguing. Yeah, um, and that was like made forever ago too. Like I don't know what kind yeah, of robot. Nineteen forties. Like we were. Probably I don't even just, know. Just barely like able to make anything robotic right it, it's actually super intriguing it's like they're very his very first story in the anthology the first story is called robbie and it's set like the story itself is set in 1998 which for him back in the day was like 50 years in the future but yeah. for us it's like 30 years in the past well and by the it's time intriguing. 1998 we had computers like we had a lot yeah more we had robots here. Yeah, we did. It just maybe not ones that you would think, you know. Yeah, not ones that, like like he explained. I mean, but Rob, it's it's Rob, all about the Rob, like the Nintendo he, guy, you know, Rob. Oh yeah, the toy, the Nintendo toy. Yeah, let me see. Cause well, he, I guess he's a Smash character now. Um. Well, yeah, people know him more for that now, but uh, uh I think he came out. 1985. So, I don't know, man. Maybe we did have robots. Maybe Isaac Asimov was on to something. Yeah. I mean, I know we definitely did have robotic machines, especially in the realm of like manufacturing. I had robotics back then. Very simple robotics, but still, it, they existed. Yeah, but I mean, that's the, your um, robotic operating buddy that you can get for your household. Plug it into your TV. Yeah, well, that's true. It's true. Yeah. Okay. So right. anyway, cool. no doubloon for that one. Dang it. Okay. I, I mean, I I, no, I would have true. said I was, so. I was going off the movie. It's like hard for yeah. me to disconnect it. I was like, I didn't know where else to go with it. So. So, yeah, it's very very intriguing. Highly recommend looking into iRobot more. Yeah, it sounds good. Um, as it it just ex it goes into something I want to talk about a little bit after this, but okay, cool. Uh, in the interest of time, we're gonna. Try and rapid fire a little bit. Yeah, let's do some rapid fire. Remaining, uh, there's six more. So okay. yeah, let's let's try and rapid fire this. Okay, hit me. Uh, number five on this list, published in 1957. So we're getting to the 50s now. Okay. Uh, it was published by Alfred Lester, hmm. and its original title. Is called Tiger Tiger. Um, this story is about a uh, cloning a tiger, so that it's an endangered species. It's the last tiger left on the planet, so they have to clone it so that it can make more offspring, so that it doesn't go extinct. Okay, <laughs> that's all I got. To be honest, that's actually super interesting <laughs> and could be its own story, like. That's so interesting. 
I don't know. Like, uh, was that it? Was I close? No, not even uh, relatively close. Okay. <laughs> not even in the same. But see, this is what's interesting why I wanted to play this game is to see how fast people could just come up with a story or, or at least a premise and work off of it. Like, you would have never known. Like, yeah. what a story to tell about, like, cloning tigers. You could totally make a movie out of that. Sure, yeah. And people no, would be kind of interested. It's true. Now, what is it actually about? So, Tiger Tiger is its original title. This next part will probably... Maybe this is kind of a trick question, but it's <laughs> now its title is The Star is My Destination. What? what it's now called. How is Tiger Tiger about space? Yes. There ain't no way, yeah, exactly. dude. <laughs> that, that's exactly what it is. So the reason it was called Tiger Tiger in the first place, it was a, it was kind of uh, sort of based off of um, William Blake's nineteen or seventeen ninety four poem, The Tiger. Um, oh. That's like kind of what it was based off of. So that's where the was his poem about space? the Tiger Tiger. I have no idea. I didn't study that far. I had okay. into okay. well, okay. Um, you pulled a fast one on me. Okay, next one. We're supposed to be rapid I did. firing. Oh, well, I, real quick. The, the stars, my destination is about uh, teleportation. Oh. Like, its entire premise is if people could teleport, like, wow. n normally. Like, if everyone can teleport, what do you do? Yeah, that, I mean, that's very interesting. What a question. Okay, next one. Okay. This one is actually. Uh, so now we're starting getting into uh, things that originated as film, not necessarily books. Maybe it was a book, but the one that I'm going off of is a TV series that started in 1979. So we jumped ahead 20 years. Okay. And this one is Hardlock Space Pirate. Well, um, I'm going to have to guess that this is about a space bounty hunter. Named Hardlock. Hardlock. H A R L O C K. Oh, Hardlock. Hardlock. Sorry. Um, and he kind of goes around like Han Solo esque. He goes around and you know gets baddies. On I mean, like the Mando. Different. Yeah, Mando. He goes around on different planets and gets guys. That's that's a better description. Uh, gotcha. That's what I think it's about. It's about like his misadventures in space. I mean, you're pretty close. I mean, uh, I, I, yeah, I don't know where else to go with that. He's, we'll he's a space pirate. I mean, what else do space pirates do? So, space pirate Harlock, or Harlock space pirate, I guess, is about, you're kind of right, a space pirate named Harlock, Captain Ooh, Harlock. Okay, see, I love something. You're out of something. <laughs> he flies the. Arcadia, which is a, it's like his space pirate ship. Yes. And it's a, they travel around the world, the universe, excuse me, searching for resources and stuff because humanity kind of destroyed Earth with its technological advances. Okay. But there's a government that's trying to cover up that it's been destroyed by sending humanity essentially out on its crusade. To like find more Earths, and only the best, most amazing people get to go to Earth and live there. It's like the sanctuary, the 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 best place you could possibly live, but only the most amazing people get to go there. Even though it's a lie, because no one actually lives there because it's dead. Dude, I, that sounds way too confusing. Uh, but also very interesting. Well, it's a, it's an anime, so really, it's, it's, an, it's anime? an anime. Yeah, okay. it's an anime. You know what? Now mm -hmm. it's starting to make more sense uh, when you say that. So I'm like, what kind of a plot is this? And I'm like, oh, it's an anime. <laughs> yeah, this that makes so sense. much deeper. Yeah, uh, yeah. That does sound okay. interesting. Uh, what do you think? Do I get half a doubloon for that? I mean, I'll give you a half doubloon because you have most of it there. I mean, so it, it was kind I will of a say now. I mean, you said Harlock. Space pirate, and then I said it's a space pirate named Harlock. Like, I feel like I really didn't. I really <laughs> That's didn't. True. That's why I'm only giving you half a doubloon because okay. the, the rest of the plot is. is so well, uh, I, I actually recommend. Half? Yeah, you have one and a half doubloons. Dang. We we there's a words. There's a 2013 
animated film that's like supposed to encapsulate the whole story of Space wow. Pirate, Captain Harlock. And I love good. that movie. You like it? I love that movie mm, so much. Okay. It is amazing. Okay. That's good. Okay. I highly recommend watching it. I think it was on Netflix. I'm not sure where to watch it now, but it's highly recommended. Space Cat Pirate Captain uh, Space Captain Space Pirate, Pirate Harlock. Captain Harlock Pirate Captain. Yeah, you yes. know. Either way. <laughs> you, 2013 film. Wow. Watch it. That's, it's great. That is recent. Okay. Uh, Surprisingly, yeah. But yeah. even like this anime, it was made in 1978. Like that's so long ago. That is a long, that's like that is a it's, long time ago. It's one year away from like Mobile Suit Gundam when that first came out. Yeah, like, I'm those are a think, year apart. Like, yeah, like anime. That's like as early as you can get for anime. I think. Um, yeah, it, it's pretty old. It's pretty old. All right. Okay. Hit me with another one. Next one. Okay. How many Publish we got left? In... We have four more. Okay. Like we really got to rapid fire them then. Okay. Uh. Here we go. Oh, of course. So this one is. When was this published? Okay. Oh, we're gonna step back a little bit. What do you mean? Um. Back in time, because we're in the nineteen seventies. Uh, okay. I okay. accidentally misread this one and there's you'll see why i mixed this yeah one up. you're good you're so good. this one is written by george orwell and was published in 1949 so we're going back like 40 years uh but the title of the book is 1984 what so it's 1949 but it's titled 1984 yes I mean, this sounds like a Jetsons kind of deal. It's like what things are like in the future. So it's just like floating cars and traveling in tubes and just like what society and technology would be like in the future. Because that was the future for them. That That's my guess. Uh... Kind of? Not really. Uh, unfortunately. Dang. That's, Dang, that's a no doubloon there. 1984 is about a dystopian world where uh, different countries kind of like try to stay in control by being in constant war with each other. Oh, and instating like in way, one of these countries. That's way too more, like realistic. Like, like that's actually too close to home, I feel like. 1984 is, you know, if you've ever heard the concept in Orwellian dystopia, it's, it's based off of 1984. If you've ever read it or understand what the story is, it is scarily close yeah, to modern-day humanity. That guy knows what he's talking about, but that's not as fun as I wanted it to be. Right. <laughs> Jetsons is pretty cool, and is technically considered sci-fi, so that's kind of interesting. Okay, coming ahead. Three more. This one was is a movie, specifically a movie, uh, okay. Made in 2011. Okay. Called Real Steel. <laughs> Real Steel, dude. I do. I have no clue, man. Um, Real Steel. It's about a robot made out of steel, and he has emotions, and uh, he doesn't know what to do with himself. So, um. He ends up really loving the this girl or something that is like the 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 doctor who created him. It's like his daughter, and they become like really good friends. And then like this, I think you're explaining evil, Mega Man. This evil monster like tries to kill her, and he like sacrifices himself to like. Is this let not her live. Mega Man? No, Mega Man doesn't have feelings. Well, dang, that's rough. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. No, original Mega Man. I mean, it's weird because if you look at like the anime adaptation stuff and like Mega Man Eight, he kind of has feelings. And like the TV show, we don't talk about that. But like Mega Man doesn't really have feelings. That, but that's why Mega Man X is so uh, impressive because it's the first thing that Doctor Light made that was like 
actually had like emotions and things like humans i got you um but mega man was okay. like the closest thing before that but no no no, no. I, I i was thinking this is like a robot becoming more human and then sacrificing himself it's probably nothing gotcha. like that uh you so you were really game. close what no there's you no were... way there's no way i was close to that you got you were so close at the start and then you kind of veered off track towards the end so I will give you half a doubloon for it. Oh, okay. But so, it okay, is about it. it is about a robot that kind of sort of has emotions, not really, but is kind of there to protect a little boy. Oh um, okay. So it's a it's a world where boxing has kind of evolved into robots boxing like super robots wow. that box each other in a ring. And it's actually really cool. It, it has a Hugh Jackman in it. Oh, dude. Okay. I this movie highly sounded, recommend. Sounded pretty really, good. really cool movie. I almost, uh, the robot. I almost feel like I've seen it. But I don't know. I feel like maybe you have. I don't know. But anyway. Yeah, half a doubloon there for you. Okay, cool. Cool, I'll take it. Now, next one. This was created in 2014. It's another movie. It's called The Edge of Tomorrow. Oh, man. You said 2014? Yeah. I it's definitely a familiar name. Edge it of... also went by the name Live, Die, Repeat. Okay, well, that's a little weird. Um, Edge of Tomorrow. I, dude, I don't know. Uh, time... Travel, uh, futuristic. A guy, a guy time travels because he finds a time machine into the future, and then like all of his alternate timeline versions of himself are trying to kill him because when he went into the future, he like altered the timeline and created an apocalypse so like they're all coming from the past to try to kill him to prevent the apocalypse from happening but then the they just keep killing each other infinitely because he keeps making new timelines uh you're sort of on the right track with time <laughs> travel unfortunately i can't give you that the balloon thank you dear. um I mean, that sounds like an interesting plot to me. Uh... It's a pretty interesting plot. Like, <laughs> pretty, pretty interesting. So, The Edge of Tomorrow, it also stars Tom, Tom Cruise. I don't know how he's come back Bro, into the Tom Cruise, here. He's, he's nuts, man. He, he he's, sneaks his like way in everything. everything. Yeah, he sneaks his way in yeah. everything. Uh, so, this one, aliens invade planet Earth, and they have this weird, like, blood juice that if it gets on a human, they have the same ability as the aliens. Which is when they die, they like return to where they were twenty four hours ago. What? So uh, Tom Cruise dies. I, I don't even know what his total death count is, but dies a lot it's in like, that movie. It's like a weird Groundhog Day with blood. Yes, actually, that oh. is pretty much what it is. It's Groundhog Day with with that's aliens. That's crazy. And stuff. It's like, oh no, I got the blood on me. See you in a couple hours or something like that. What the heck? Yeah. Well, no one else remembers, but he does. Oh, that's so he's black. able to kind of turn the tide of the battle, ish. Yeah, I like uh, that. That's cool. Anyway, not gonna. That one's recent enough. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend. Okay. Okay. The last one on this list, the oh, most wow. recent uh, sci-fi kind of story on this list published well i guess it's not really published but it was made in 2018 it's a video game it's called detroit become human mm, dude you would think i would know this but i don't I, I i know the game because everybody like was playing it when it was new everybody was talking about it and i know it's a very narrative heavy game i i have not played it i don't know anything about it uh so, Detroit Become Human. It's about an android uh, who is trying to learn how to be a human. He's like under, like he doesn't want people to know he's a robot. So he's like trying to like sneakily learn how to be a human. And he ends up having like a romance with somebody. But he's like a robot. So it's kind of weird. 
and it's like in the it's like it's like a dystopian future kind of that's that's my guess and i literally know nothing about the game so okay okay i'll give you that because it is one that is one of the there's like three main characters in that game to play through that's one of the three is it so yeah, uh, I'll give you a point for that no one. Way. One of the three characters follows a, a two, almost to to the exact that specific. Um, Wait, so he's a robot, but he narrative. doesn't want people to know. Yeah, that and, part. And he no way. He ends I, up I having a romance. On that. I guessed on that. I, I had a feeling there was a romance. I think I've seen a couple images, but I never guessed. I didn't even know it was about a robot. Uh, I just guessed. Well, it's that. an android. You specifically said an android. And it is specifically about androids. Well, the reason I guessed so, it is because it's called Detroit Become Human. So I'm like, I feel like it's about this guy who wants to become more human-like. Uh, yeah. That that was my guess. So, dude, that's okay. I'll take it. I'm happy with that one. Yeah, doubloon for you. Three so, okay, for this me. three whole doubloons, three out of thirteen. Bro. <laughs> I mean, that's, good. honestly, from I think for my standards, that's pretty good because I didn't know any of these. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tiger well, Tiger so, should be its own thing, bro. Somebody make it happen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, definitely. Uh, Detroit Become Human is actually kind of an evolution of the story I Robot. It's ah, like a, okay. it's androids being put in positions where. They are supposed to follow the the laws of robotics, right? Mm-hmm. But they're being placed in positions that they don't know how to get out of. And their programming is advanced enough that they create sub-laws within their own programming to kind of become more human. It's very intriguing. Highly recommend. Interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, I've heard great things about the game. Uh, you know, it's just, I just haven't got around to it. So. That was cool. So, yeah. Uh, given that exploration of uh, all of these things, I know we don't have too much time left. Um, this kind of brings about a general understanding that it's less about like space and stuff like that when it comes to sci fi, but it's more so about using technology to tell a story. Yeah. Like having, having characters, like if you're talking about the three pillars of, of storytelling the, the three trains of the analogy train technology kind of ends up filling in the world or that like the world section the world building section of the the train mm-hmm. is some sort of technology that enhances people's lifestyle beyond what the consumer could imagine yeah you have things like robotics or space travel those are common ones yeah but we just explore things like dystopian technologies teleportation as a technology uh real steel is robot boxers like that doesn't even have hardly any that's like a whole another realm of entertainment yeah Um, no and travel is a technology i i mean i feel like a lot of it it's it's kind of like what you'd expect but at the same time it's uh it's not like i feel like what people think of with sci-fi is like sci-fi fantasy i feel like is like there's this label on sci-fi that it has to be like like out of this world or like post-apocalyptic with like robots and it's like there's so much more room there for a sci-fi that is completely original and unique and i think uh what i've learned from this is a lot of these topics are kind of like they're diving into topics and things that are very interesting. Like they're, they're more thought provoking. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yep. Kind of like this hypothetical world where it like technology did this or that, but it's trying to, it's trying to come up with a story that could happen almost like, um, or yeah, you know what I mean? Something that's like still kind of possible instead of it being like, you know, uh, this, you know, flaming dragon, like, flew over my house and picked me up, and then we flew into a storybook, and now I'm in an uh, yeah. universe, you know, it's like, way more, way more, like, realistic things that make you think, right, because 
a lot of these books that were not true at the time, uh, like the whether it's 2000 Leagues Under the Sea or 20,000 Leagues or whether it's uh, 1984 or whatever it is, like there, there's a lot of these books that have kind of like shown that this stuff is possible, like as time goes on. So, uh, yeah, scientific that, plausibility, yeah. as it's called. Yeah, so I don't know what to call that. It's almost like uh, trying to look into the future is like what sci-fi is. Um, yeah, yeah. Coming up with to a me, possible future. Right, yeah. To me, um, this that coming up with a possible future or like using technology, characters using technology to explore an ethical question on like what humanity is or what life is. It's kind of like the core essence of what a sci-fi is. Um, it's just how they go about that is totally different. And I I have so many favorite sci-fi stories. I personally love technology. I love the ability that technology has to enhance people's lives. Yeah. Uh, so any any of these stories that go into like the exploration of like okay but what is the ethics of that what are the consequences of that why technically you could consider like jurassic park a sci-fi yeah yeah no you could it is interesting um, how, how broad it is while also not being super broad at the same time kind of interesting yeah so would you say you've become a little bit more interested in sci-fi after all of this, or are you still kind of like, eh? Uh, it's a little of both. Cause I'm like, I've definitely realized more about what sci-fi actually is. And it's in a lot of ways, it's shown me why I don't like it, but there are some concepts that do intrigue me. Oh, man. So like, mm -hmm. I, but I, I, I feel like I tend to lean towards things that are less realistic which is why sci-fi doesn't capture me. Because um, I think I'm, interesting. I, I, I'm also, interesting. I'm not really into space uh, as a whole, which if you mix that with uh, realistic technology and sci-fi, I like, it makes it even less interesting to me. Um, but there, yeah, there's nothing against, I have nothing against those, those topics, but I, I usually when I consume uh, things, I like them to be like out worldish and completely off the walls, creative, and like I, I I love it when characters are like I love like I I love character development right, which is what I said before. But I I want uh -huh. I like it when the like like when I play games and watch movies, I want it to be in like things that aren't possible in real life. I like to get as far away from real life as possible when I do stuff. Um, Interesting. So I think I think that's more why I don't like sci-fi. Um, and, but this helped me kind of like piece that together, you know, so, yeah, 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 and it's really cool to, to even talk about it. I mean, it was fun guessing all those stories, uh, right. Yeah. I'll have to quiz you one of these well, times. Oh yeah. Lay it on me. I, I bet <laughs> I could come up with way worse results than what you had. Three out of 13 is pretty good. Yeah. Let's we'll see if you can beat my score. Um, so with that being said, I think it's so important, as you mentioned with characters, um, it's so important that when you introduce this technology and you tell these stories, if you're trying, to, for, for those of you who are trying to write a sci-fi story, what I'm seeing here is it's so important that you have your characters kind of transcend the technology, if that makes sense. Think around the boundaries that that technology introduces. So if it's about teleportation, like the, the Tiger Tiger one, that it's the guy that's doing it, it's about a criminal that like somehow that power has been sealed away, but everyone else can do it, but he can't. And it's just like, it's a, that's an exploration of uh, taking a boundary with that technology and kind of moving around it. Everyone else can do it but you. How does that make you feel? That's what makes the story interesting. Mm, yeah, Giving yeah. your technology in here. Or on the other hand, John Carter of Mars is like the opposite, where John Carter is the only one that can do what he does. Right. Um, based on kind of the technology. I guess in this case, it's like biotechnology I mean, kind of stuff where he, I mean, he's whisked away through space to be a superhero somewhere else what's funny is that they're both isolated in those situations you know what i mean yeah yeah 
so even though he has um, superpowers on mars like he's still alone in how he feels you know so right yeah very interesting so i think that's one of the most important things that makes an intriguing sci-fi story is how do your characters coexist with this technology in an interesting way yeah because you just had to tell a story like in in a way that helps you explore humanity better so yeah. out of all those movies or i mean there weren't all movies but out of all the things you you said you listed i wanted to watch the hugh jackman boxing one and the uh uh-huh. and the tom cruise blood one those ones sounded the most interesting to me so. gotcha so the two newest movies on the list the 2011 2014 well, it was the pre. I mean, if it was, uh, I mean, I enjoy movies, but like, if they came out in the seventies, like, it would be the same thing. It was, the, it was the premises that. Kind of ah, uh, okay, okay, me. gotcha. So, but anyways, uh, that'll do it for this episode. We gotta wrap things yeah. up. Yeah. Okay. Train's leaving well, the station. The train's leaving the station. Thank you guys for listening so much. I hope you've been able to learn uh, just about as much as we have about science fiction. And uh, next episode, Logan will be hosting us. And uh, thank you so much for listening. This has been Story Dive. Yes, dude. We um, we are officially out on everything, you know, and we're going to keep going. We should be on Spotify and YouTube at the very least by the time you're listening to this. Uh, so give us a like and a good rating if you can. Um. But yeah, be sure to subscribe definitely to the Story Dive podcast um, YouTube channel. That way you can get all of the notifications. We will be posting small shorts, polls, uh, what questions, quizzes, all kinds of good stuff coming up in the future. Yeah. Well, Kai, do you want to take us out? Oh, no, take us out. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. The train, we salute you from the train as we depart. Hence, uh, we will, the train will come back to the station uh, next Friday. This has been Story Dive. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>